Hi there, welcome to www.highschoolmaths.co.uk. Today we're going to be looking at how you read scales. So this is quite a general numeracy skill and the, the kind of idea behind it will be the same for any scale you look at. And when we're talking about scales, we're talking about linear scales here, so things you might see in graphs or like an odometer in a car. And it's, it's really about making sure you're as accurate as possible when you're interpreting data from these different types of scales. So we're going to go over three basic examples of this and look how you, you can figure out what the jump is uh, for each division within the scale. So if we look at the first one, we've got three, uh, three different parts, A, B, and C to look at. So we've got 100 up to 200. Now, really what you're looking to do is establish how many jumps, how many intervals are there between 100 and 200. So it goes one, two, three. So it's uh, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so what we're doing, there's a, a, between 100 and 200, we've got a gap of 100 and it's split equally five ways. Okay, so the first thing we want to establish is how much is each jump. So it's going up by 20 each time, so we won 20, 140, 160, and so on. I'm going to run out of space. 180, 200. Okay, so for A, here we're looking at 160. The rest of the scale is going to work the same as a linear scale, so it's the same jump all the way. So 200, 220, 240, 260. Now, if you look at the B arrow, that's halfway between 240 and 260, so you would say that's 250. A little bit of an estimate there, um, but a fairly accurate estimate if you look at where the arrows place, because it's right in the middle of that 240 and 260. And the last one, we've got 300, 320, 340, 360, and 380. Okay, so that was a scale. It, it, it'll work the exact same way. The scale will be divided up in different questions in different ways. So let's have a look at the second and third examples. We've got a couple of odometers here, a couple of um, measuring speed. The first one, you can see the arrows point to somewhere between 60 and 70. Okay, so we're looking somewhere between the 60 and the 70. Now, if we count this, the jumps from 60 to 70, we've got uh, let's rub that out. Do, 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 do. So we've got one, two, three, four. Okay, so we've only got four jumps there. Now the gap is 10. So what we're really doing is we're taking that gap of 10, we're dividing it by four, and that tells us each interval, each little ju jump is 2.5. So it'll be like 62.5. 65, 67.5, 70. So it's not jumping up in a whole number here. Okay, uh, so we want the arrows pointing right in the middle, though, of the 60 and the 70. So you could probably, without figuring out it's 2.5 jumps, because it's right in the middle of the 60 and 70, it's going to be 65 kilometers per hour. And the last one, uh, again, a different odometer here. So this time we've got the speeds going up to 180. And here, we're looking to see, okay, now I'm not going to be able to show the, the jumps here, but we've got from 0 to 20, we've got to figure out how is that getting from 0 to 20. There are actually 10 jumps, okay? So we're going from 0 to 20. The gap between those two markers is 20. We're dividing that into 10 jumps. So that means, that means each jump is 2 kilometers per hour. So if we look at where that roughly sits, I would say it's, just about on the four. So I would say that's about four kilometers per hour. Now, when you're reading scales, and uh, and especially ones where the divisions are really, really small, you'll have a little bit of uh, an error, but you want to be as accurate as possible because reading scales is something that comes in to a lot of real life scenarios, whether it be measuring uh, different weights of fruits or veg in a supermarket, or reading scales in a hospital, or reading your odometer in your car. There's lots of different applications and situations where you would have to read scales. So it's fairly important that you, you know how to read a scale accurately and keep it as close to the exact value as you can. Okay, so hopefully you found that helpful. And for other maths videos and resources, please visit www.highschoolmaths.co.uk. If you liked the video, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe. And please share this video with your friends. Thank you for watching and have a mathematical day.